Hey, welcome to This Week at Gear Report. I'm Jeff. I'll be your tour guide this evening. And I'll tell you what, why don't we dive right into our agenda? Oh, I'm going to have to stop moving the desk. This thing's getting shaky, shaking the camera. Sorry about that. Uh, our agenda for this week, just like every week on This Week at Gear Report, we talk about everything that's been published since the show last week. And things are in an upcoming review queue. And then the generic sh shooting portion where we talk about whatever we want to talk about. I've got some really cool, really exciting things to talk to you about uh, this evening. Some cool things that have been published. So let's um, dive right in. And uh, first, before we dive in to the recently published reviews, I do want to give you a little update. If you are familiar with the show, you know that usually we've got uh, TJ. Here, uh, I was going to say it's a sidekick. I think I tend to be the sidekick, and TJ is just here. And uh, Ghost Tactical has been with us quite a bit recently. Um, I'm the only one you got for right now. So we're going to just dive in and get straight to the content. And if they show up, maybe they'll contribute to the, uh, to the shit shooting. But for now, let's see. We'll go to, we'll go to this window, and then I will change over to this one all right so we've got the uh a review of the gray man tactical uh gun rack that goes uh behind the seat of a car this is really kind of interesting so i've known about gray man tactical for several years and uh i believe the guy that runs it his name is paul and uh geez we've met and talked at at various different events for years and it's like every time we talk we we talk about okay what do we want to put in a battle wagon uh to show your stuff off and he has ideas and i have ideas and then for whatever reason uh it never happens um <laughs> i think we both want to do it we just have other things going on and don't get to it so um aj actually hooked up with them and got this molly panel so i wish i could remember what molly means if you know what molly means go ahead and leave a comment uh it's the m-o-l-l-e it's uh, some sort of military attachment system uh with with little loops and and uh, straps where you can attach things to a molly panel so this is like a polymer panel with the the molly gaps and holes on it to kind of like sewn on loops on on a, a cloth molly panel that allows you to attach to attach all kinds of stuff to it and they size them to fit in various different places so you can see that aj here has got an ar in what appears to be a a holder that is made just to, to hold it specifically and he's also got some other things strapped on to the um molly panel this one uh, you can see the list of components he's got here in the vehicle hunting gun rack rmp package uh, so you can read about all the different things that are in it the different specs on uh, the injection molded glass filled panel and all the different things that go with it how his field test went what he liked what he didn't like and then his final thoughts on it as usual i'm not going to read it to you I'm going to ask you if this is interesting to you. Go check out the Gray Man Tactical Review right here on Gear Report. All right, bounce back and end the screen share because that is going to cause us problems, I think. Hide. There we go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> here on time. So, Gun Snob is often a little bit behind schedule so we do appreciate you getting here on time i was actually here on time uh just barely uh so we got a trend going still working i knew that was going to happen tj called me earlier and he said someone else dropped the ball he and and he suspected he was going to end up working late to clean it up and i said uh i don't know man i think i'd worry about my stuff let someone else clean up their own mess but tj's nicer than me so he's there uh helping helping uh, make sure his clients are taken care of even when other people drop the ball so i'm not going to beat him up over that that's uh i have one of those and love it all right i'm assuming that gun snob's talking about the panel molly otherwise known as ecstasy a term often used in rap music that would explain why i have no idea what you're talking about yeah sorry I'm not even sure that I would agree to call rap music. 
But, you know, that that could be a debate for another time. All right, let's go back to the screen. I don't like the way I'm sharing that. We're, we're going to change this up. By the way, for the folks that are listening, please leave me a comment on how this sounds. You may notice the musical chairs for microphones has rotated again. So this one is from Donner. It's the, uh, I think it's P, P08, I believe is the model. And this one just came in yesterday. It's a dynamic mic that, um, that it captures sound from the end, which is different. I've been using, let me swing this one in. I've been using this uh, TZ Stellar X3, which is a condenser mic. And um, it picks up sound from the side. So I wanted to try one with a little bit different orientation here. So let me know how that sounds. I know when I tried this one, the way I had it hooked up and do some sort of helicopter sound. So I, I really need to hook this one up and try it for one of the shows um, and see, uh, you know, wired correctly and see if it does any better. All right. So we're going to go back to screen sharing. We'll go to the screen, and instead of just the window, I'm going to pick a tab this time. And since we were, since we just saw a comment from TJ, uh, we're going to go with TJ's latest review, the BRG9 Elite. That is a nine millimeter pistol, so be careful. You might blow your lungs out, you know, because it's nine millimeter and all that. TJ gave this a 3.5 out of 5 gears. You're going to have to read uh, in, in depth here to figure out exactly why he gave it a 3.5 instead of uh, something higher when he also said it's a game changer. Uh, and I'll remind you, 3.5 gears means that um, is a bit above average among similar products because. Uh, you know, we do have a very specific uh, ranking system for the different gears ratings. Okay, so let me get back to here. Okay, so uh, the BRG9 Elite is a striker fired polymer framed semi automatic pistol in 9mm. Comes with two 16 round mags, interchangeable back straps, multicolored uh, dots on the dovetail sights and a pretty comprehensive cleaning kit and molded plastic case. What he left off of this is the case is molded, but it also has a really neat kind of precision cutout foam that everything fits in. And uh, if there's one thing I would, I, I would like to add to this review is a picture of the open case with all the stuff in it, because it actually looks really cool. Uh, and I don't think I have access to our SHOT Show pictures. I shot one of these at SHOT Show. I thought it felt really well in my hand. It shot pretty well. Um, I only put one or two magazines through it. I didn't do an extensive test. But I walked, I walked into it thinking, I've never even heard of this brand. The BRG9, never heard of it. Brand new. Kind of looks like an XD to me from Springfield. Um, is this even interesting? And then they show the case and how, it, how it's delivered. It's very well packaged and presented. It felt pretty good in my hands. It shot well. It cycled well. Felt pretty comfortable, not just holding it, but shooting it. And then they said the price. And I believe the MSRP is like 400 bucks. And I think that's where this goes from. Eh, okay, it's an, a, another polymer pistol in nine millimeter that, that has a nice, you know, case and a, a cleaning kit to, whoa, wait a second. That's a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars less than some other pistols that seem to me to be pretty comparable. And, and I can tell you the specs that they rattled off when we were talking to the Buffalo Cartridge Company folks about this gun. Um, sounded to me like pretty much every component in it is put together in a way that is an upgrade. You know, they use a higher grade of steel with the um, 4340 uh, forged, heat treated, and um, 
some other things. You know, like everything is on the premium. Like if you go get a bougie, you know, Gucci Glock, they're going to have done all the stuff to it that this pistol comes with stock and it's only 400 bucks MSRP. So you can uh, read the details to find out why it didn't get a four and a half or a four. It got a three and a half. Um, but you're going to have to actually come read the review to get all of that. All right, let's see. TJ says for the price. Sorry. Nothing to be sorry about, TJ. Oh, hey, it's these guys. Yes, indeed it is, Defense Dad. Oh, so the image of the case with everything in it is one that TJ was having trouble getting WordPress to accept. Let me see if I can get this where I want it. All right. So um, I haven't seen any feedback on how the mic sounds. I, I'm assuming that means it's okay or someone would have told me by now. Uh, it is dangerous to do initial testing of a mic on a live show, but uh, you know what? That's how I roll. All right. Snob says it's a good value, but it needs an optic. It needs an optic cut. They forgot it's 2020, but he did tell me. He did tell me they have an optic ready model releasing soon. I actually think that is uh, a good plan. To be honest with you, if I were bringing this gun to market, I think I would have brought it with. Um, I think I think I would have brought it to market like they did with a standard slide because there I I suspect that far more people will buy without an optics cut than people would buy with an optics cut. And they need to establish um, as broad a reach into the market as possible and steal some market share and get, get some legs under the brand. Uh, so now that it's out there and people are uh, reviewing it, people are appreciating it, people are saying good things about it and asking for an optics cut, instead of bringing an optic, optics cut for some people who have no use for that, now they have people saying, where's the optics cut? So the demand is going to pull the optics cut into the market instead of them bringing it first. And then people being like, well, why'd you even bring that? Like, I don't even need an optics cut. Unfortunately, you sound like Jeff. Well, you say unfortunate to me. That's kind of what I was hoping to sound like. So, yeah, I'm going to say that's a good thing. I think I figured it out this AM. That might be the upload problem. I don't know because TJ didn't, didn't elaborate on that. Mic sounds great. Good. Okay. And you know what? This is kind of a budget mic. The other one, this, uh, this uh, Stellar X3 is like a three, $350 mic. And uh, I don't know that it actually sounds much better at all. It has slightly different frequency response because i did graph the frequency response of both of them um in audacity and um and they were different but as far as what i could hear mm, not necessarily sure that the uh 350 mic sounds much if at all better than the 80 dollar mic that i'm using right now uh, so yeah I disagree. If it has an optics cut, you don't have to use it. If you are a savage and don't use optics, so it gives you options. It does, but those options come at an additional cost. And I know people who are they just out of principle. They're like, I will never use an optic. I am not paying extra for an optics cut because I know I'm never going to use it. So, yeah. Um, and I think there are more FUDs and, and people who aren't as up to date on firearms trends and equipment as the gun snob. Um, and I see, I didn't even call Clover out on that, but you, you know where I'm coming from, right? So, uh, but, but yeah, who knows? Yes, it was the upload problem. I forgot to change the size setting when moving over to WordPress. Oh, optics cut rule. Okay. I hear you. Um, the funny thing, well, you know what? I'm not going to call TJ out on this either, but uh, I'm going to stop bugging him so he can get his work done, take care of his client instead of uh, 
having to keep answering things for us. Moving on to the next segment of the program, we have upcoming reviews. Or do we? You know what? We don't. We're going to go back to shit shooting because that is the segment I have more fun with. And I want to share with you guys some things I was doing today. Um, and I'll show you what I started with. Uh, if we can get the, I think I'm going to have to turn that light down a little. And probably going to have to shade it so we can see. There we go. So if you follow any of our social media, then you'll see that, that I got the engraver out to make some swag for our friends at Marksman for Vets today. Uh, so the first test piece I did was this little uh, round with Marksman for Vets on one side and MOA Customs on the other. And then I did a bigger one, again, MOA and Marksman. And I played with this little kind of bookmark looking one as well. Um, if you have any other ideas on things I could do with that logo stuff, I can burn it onto with the laser engraver. Let me know and maybe I'll come up with something else for them. Um, anyhow, I'm going to send Russ at Marksman for Vet some of that stuff here pretty soon. While I had it out, I made a uh, a couple of these things for the Philmont Trek Talk group that I run on Facebook. And these are set up for some of the people in that group. So I'm going to send these out to them. Had fun playing. Yeah, I, I did a lot of stuff with the laser engraver this morning. Oh, and I took the other one downstairs. I was going to show you guys something else I did, but I took it down to show my son and didn't bring it back. Um, let's just say I'm getting a little better with the laser engraver. I think I've figured out the settings and how to align things properly so that I can churn out more and more things on the laser engraver. Um, and I do seem to have a fetish for these uh, pieces of wood where they just did a cross section of like a tree branch or a log, or this is a big one. It's actually pretty light for his size. I've got those and various, various other things that I get creative with. So if you have any ideas for what I should do with uh, burning things on the laser engraver, let me know. If you've got a logo that you want to see on something, talk to me. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, we can work something out where I can help you with that. Okay, so shit shooting. I talked about helping marksmen for vets. Go check them out. It's a neat organization where Russ collects parts from brands and individuals and assembles them into uh, typically AR-15 or AR style uh, rifles and uh, or pistols, I suppose. I don't know. And then gifts them, gives them to uh, veterans I'm trying to turn. Oh, wrong button. I'm trying to turn my light up a little bit there. I uh, gifts them to veterans um, uh, who who just don't have anything to shoot and, and would enjoy them. So really neat little uh, nonprofit type thing that they have going on over there. Let's see. Of course, Jeff has a wood fetish. Um, not sure how to respond to that. Um, maybe. Yeah, it just so happens that the type of laser engraver I have, a diode laser, does far better on wood than it does other stuff. I have done things like the anodized uh, bottle openers here. If I can get it to not reflect too much, you can see the gear report in there. Yeah, the light's too bright. You get it bright enough on my face, then it washes out anything I hold up to the camera. Um, done a little bit of blasting through anodized uh, metal with the engraver, but wood really is what works best. I actually ordered last night, I ordered a couple different types of leather bound notebooks to make a uh, a ship's notebook for my Sea Scouts, so uh, so they'll have a logbook that will look kind of cool, and we'll emblazon the Sea Scout logo on it, and uh, that that should be kind of fun. Let's see. He says, "I wish I got one of those engravers. I wish you had two. Uh, you got to be quick, man." Um, what did we see? We saw the cup rotator. My daughter saw a cup rotator on Vine a couple days ago, and that's like a $140, $150 thing that allows you to put a cup or a mug on the engraver, and it'll, it'll engrave one line and then rotate the cup and engrave the next line and rotate the cup and engrave the next line and rotate the cup. 
so that you can engrave a flat image on a curved surface. Um, but we didn't get to that one in time. And that, um, that depressed me. Flying Rich, overachieving with the appropriate number of yo's yet again. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Where's TJ? You know, of all the times that gets asked and the, and the, the funny backstory behind it, in this case, TJ is working. Um, yeah, he, he couldn't make it this evening because he's got a client that uh, he's too good of a professional, too good of a person to allow the client to suffer because some other contractor let them down. All right, people being nice to each other in the comments. We appreciate that. All right, so that was shit shooting. The other thing I wanted to talk about was I got the, um, all right, let me share. Oops, let me get back here. And I want to share the screen again. Oops. There's the screen. All right. So we're going to go to the new YouTube page of the new channel that I just created. Uh, instead of gear report, now we have camping gear report. And if this goes well, then, you know, we may expand and have firearms gear report or gun gear report or um, sailing gear report or Humvee gear report. I mean, I expect to spawn different versions of this, which now that I say I should probably go out and create them all and just not launch them yet. So at least I have those reserved. But uh, we just launched that a few days ago. I've been frantically publishing videos that really haven't got a lot of traction yet, but I'm absolutely trying to um, seed this channel with some content. So I put a lot of time here into getting this content ready um, so that we can get a little bit of momentum going on that channel. So then when YouTube gets pissy that we post gun, gun content, you know, for evil firearms and they shut the channel down, we'll still have the other channel with all the camping gear because that is a major portion of the content that we put out. So what I wanted to show you on here, if we can make this work, is we've got a video of the two massive crates of military shelters, the basic tents. Uh, that were donated to Philmont Scout Ranch out in New Mexico. Uh, they've had some fire issues with fires there at the ranch as well as near the ranch. And it um, doesn't look like YouTube is willing to work while, uh, while our stream is live today. All right, maybe, maybe it's going to pop up now. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, the 25 by 18, the very, very large military shelters that we have, the base X 305 tents, I donated four of them. You can see them on the left in this video. Well, you could until I turned it back at me. And um, they're going to use two of them for a remote uh, camp to run a mountain biking program out in the back country. And they're going to use the other two as part of their forest fire mitigation program through their conservation department. So one tent has, um, one crate has a tent on bottom, a tent on top, the other one again, a tent on bottom, a tent on top. They're both laid down in there. Super heavy, super difficult, you know, almost 400 pounds per tent, getting them in the crates and then getting the crates from my house onto the trailer and the trailer uh, over to the, um, to the shipping dock was pretty challenging since I don't have a forklift. So anyhow, you can go watch that video. Uh, actually, that'd, that'd be awesome. If no, if anyone doesn't mind doing me a favor, go find a camping gear report on YouTube and watch some of the videos. Um, I'm not even gonna ask you to subscribe. If you think there's value in it that you would enjoy, then please subscribe. If not, then please don't because it's not really gonna help our numbers anyway to have people subscribe who aren't interested let's see a amazon vine apparently had a bushnell prs scope the other day <laughs> yeah 1700 tax value that that would be a hit but you know for that kind of money you could make an argument that uh, you receive it you do the review you sell it at a very um 
you know, maybe for half price. And even after you pay the tax value, you still made a few hundred bucks and you have a review that you can monetize through affiliate stuff. Those big items, I get how tax value can scare you away, but they can be pretty good. Um, and, you know, and you run across things like this uh, black hound optic, the, the six to 24 by 50 Genesis series, first focal plane uh, scope that I got off of Vine. Well, you know what? We went to a party that that uh, Black Hound had a couple years ago at SHOT Show and had great discussions with them. And uh, yeah, well, they, they'd ask, will we do some reviews? Sure we will. They never sent anything. So I didn't even have to deal with them this time. Just request it off of Vine and here it is. And I'll get to the review when I can and I don't have them give me a hard time about it. So sometimes, sometimes that works out better for me. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you would. Um, well, if you make them, I guess you can sell them back to me since you wouldn't do that. Would you? Um, I don't know. Leave a comment. If you think the gun snob would try to shaft me like that. I'm thinking he wouldn't, I think he'd act like he would, but I don't think he, he would. Oh yeah. I should put a link in the chat. That's a really good idea. Let's do this. So you can't see it, but I'm going to go copy the channel. And I'm going to drop that in the chat here. No, it didn't copy. I can try that again. Copy. Paste. There we go. Now the link to Camping Gear Report is out there. And uh, if you know people who like camping gear, uh, I say it's out there. I click the button. There we go. It just took a while to share it. Um, if you know anyone who would like camping content or anyone who would like to contribute uh, and provide some camping content for the Camping Gear Report channel, send them my way. Um, I think that'll be pretty cool. Let's see here. That was shit shooting. Let's talk about upcoming reviews. Uh, let's see. So you saw that optic. I've still got the Vortex Razor. Uh, HD Gen 3, which is the uh, 1 to 10 by 24 uh, LVPO. That that's I've been waiting on a specific firearm to come in to put that on, and it was supposed to be here months ago, and it's not here yet. So that one keeps sitting, and I do apologize for that. Um, other stuff that is in my queue, you know what? I'm not even sure what's up in my queue right now. There there are several things. I haven't decided what the next thing is going to be, uh, whether it's going to be firearms. I've got a bunch of guitar stuff that's in the queue. I actually have a whole bunch of camping content. Actually, I know that a lot of that camping content is going to go up on Camping Gear Report so I can get that channel started. Um, I know TJ's got a few more things. Then there are eight pending articles on uh, gearreport.com on the back end. And uh, they're mostly firearms. I think actually all of them are firearms related. So I will, I, you know what, I'll read through and tell you what some of those are. As soon as this, um, as soon as it loads, there we go, I'll post. Um, I, so we've got a white label armory AR-15 complete premium upper receiver. Uh, we already talked about the Gray Man Tactical and the BRG-9. Saltwater Arms Barracuda. That is a cool, like, corrosion-proofed AR that TJ has in draft form. Uh, Wolfpack Armory CSR-556, another AR that's in draft form. The A-Rex Delta Gen 2 L Optics Ready Pistol. Does that make you happy, Snob? It's Optics Ready. That one is impending. That means in the next few days, I'm going to go through and edit it and get that published. Also impending, the, oh, I can't pronounce this, Barwaris, Barwaris Storm 47 AK-47 muzzle brake. Um, the, uh, let's see, the Elftman Tactical AK-47 Trigger SE, another Apex Delta pistol review, another Barwaris this one is a flash hider for the AK-47. That is also pending. Um, a permanent AK-47 optics mount. 
the Barwaris SULA rail scope base for the AK-47 and 74, also in pending. The Viridian Venta rifle scope. It's a 1.5 to 4.5 by 32 second focal plane. That is in pending. Uh, we have the Blackhound Genesis. Wait a second. Is this a Genesis? Oh, this is a Genesis too. Blackhound Genesis 4 to 14 by 44 first focal plane uh, scope. That one is in pending. Uh, let's see. Everything else. Oh, man, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, but that's in drafts. But we're not going to dig into that. Oh, I see Bob has got an Arex Delta Gen 2 X optics ready. Trey uh, Ghost has got the Delta X pistol. That one's already published. Okay. So I think that is way more than you probably cared to hear about what's coming. So those are the things that you... Um, uh, uh, that, that you want to know about. Okay. I got choked by the nice lady at Saltwater Arms because TJ wasn't at NRAMP for her to strangle him over his review. Well, the review hadn't been published. So I'm assuming that she is frustrated that it has taken longer than she would like. But, uh, to be honest, um, I don't think he's taken an unreasonable amount of time for the thoroughness of the review that he's doing. Uh, I mean, he dropped that thing in a saltwater pool 30 days in a row. You can't do that in a week. It takes 30 days to do a saltwater corrosion test that involves dropping a gun in saltwater for um, 30 days in a row. Yeah, yeah, that's why I suspected. Um, I think she's going to be happy with how thorough the review was, and it is getting close to being ready. She was funny. She was just giving him crap. Well, I'm all for that, to be honest. Oh, that's a very good point, Defense Dad. The wanted to choke TJ could have... No, I didn't want to say that. You know, in a professional environment, I hate to even imply that anyone has fetishes when, you know, we're really just talking about gun reviews, right? Yeah, and... I feel like that comment is just going to take us further off the rails. We're going to get rid of that one. TJ, I got it half written and I'm waiting on an optic from Meprolite. Ugh, that's the one. Okay. And we talked about that today, how he has finally connected with the rep for Meprolite who promised stuff like right after SHOT Show and it still hadn't shown up, still hadn't shown up. And apparently he changed his email address and it took some sleuthing so that uh, he could get a hold of the guy and stuff should be here soon so we can wrap that up that's why i'm here i do it so you don't have to well yeah i really am trying to stop taking us off the rails i know that that people get upset about that because that's like the only good part of the show is when we go off the rails or at least that's the best part probably but um but that's how it is. Oh, and I have just received a text message from the gun snob. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I can uh, get that up on the screen here. No, the keyboard stopped working. All right, looks like we're not going to do that. I've noticed that my new little um, Bluetooth keyboard that I'm trying with this likes to kind of go to sleep and then not wake itself back up when I'm ready to start typing. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, we're not going to bring up that because I can't get into Facebook, but I will try to show you if, if we can get it up here. There we go. Oh, my light's in the way. But you can see she is choking a gun snob, which frankly doesn't and doesn't motivate me to get that review published, to, to be honest. Just say it. All right. <laughs> so, man, Mystic shows up and immediately trolls TJ. Nice. All right. So, um, 
I think that's all we got going on this evening. Um, I know we normally go like an hour and 46 minutes, but I think we're going to stop at about the 35 minute mark tonight because um, that's what we have. Oh, uh, I do want to tease what we have going on next week. I think next week is going to be really interesting. If you've ever met or talked to Marcus from Modern Spartan Systems, then you know that uh, no conversation with him is ever um, brief, and they all tend to be very interesting. And I'm I'm, going to tell you, Marcus and I talked for about 35 minutes this evening uh, before this show, and he has got some pretty intense views on the state of the country. I doubt we're going to get into those because we're going to talk about his products from Modern Spartan System, and they have a new gun coating. Um, oh, man, that was harsh. TJ, I, I don't know why, why you're getting, uh, I don't know why you're getting the hate here. I think TJ enhances the program. So, so anyhow, Modern Spartan System, they have cleaning kits like this starter kit here. Ah, here we go. Without the glare. This has got their accuracy oil, carbon destroyer, carbon and lead destroyer, and crystal clear, which is for optics. And I, I mentioned this, I think it was the last show, that this stuff will ruin you because you think your gun's clean with other products, and then you go run this stuff through it and realize it wasn't. So uh, they're going to come on and talk a little bit about their cleaning stuff, a little bit about here's their blade oil for knives. We can get that out of the glare. Um, they'll talk about those. They'll talk about the TVT oil treatment for uh, engines, which, you know, I got to be honest. Um, I got to be honest, I, I thought it was snake oil when I tried it a few years ago, and it, it did some amazing things for my van that the engine was kind of shaky. It settled that down. It ran so smooth, I thought the, thought the engine wasn't running, and it gave me about a mile, one, one and a half miles per gallon uh, improvement in fuel mileage in that conversion van. It did a little bit more in the Humvee. Um, I put it in my Prius before a trip this weekend. I would normally, on the highway like that, I'd normally get about 42 miles a gallon. I got 46.8 um, on that trip from uh, North Carolina up almost to D.C., so that was about a four-hour trip. Um, that was pretty impressive. Uh, I've got some, I've got another bottle. I need to put it in the Humvee. Maybe I'll do that before the car show this weekend and see if I get better mileage if it runs smoother on that trip. But we'll talk about those. They have a new coating that's supposed to be like Cerakote, more durable, more corrosion resistant than Cerakote, and you don't have to bake it. You, like a novice can paint with it. You don't have to have a convection oven to bake it if I didn't bastardize that. So um, we will look forward to that next week. He's gonna have uh, Matthew Comer. I'm not sure what Matt's gonna talk about. I've 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 always known Matthew as one of the folks that uh, does a lot of coding behind the scenes for Defense Distributed and the Ghost Gunner platform. Um, so I'm not sure what he's going to talk about in terms of uh, modern Spartan systems. And we'll see who else shows up. Um, I have heard a rumor that we could have a Charlie Melton sighting next week. Um, but I, I'm not counting on that because I think we had initially scheduled it for this week and some things changed. We had to slip it to next, next week. Don't know if Charlie's going to be available, but I had, I had heard a tease that he may be coming on the show next week. So we'll have to wait and see if that happens. Um, and TJ making you go solo. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, it, it's rough when you have me uh, with no one to, to give me a break. So you just get me the whole time. Um, but Hey, we do what we can. And, uh, TJ is being a better businessman than me. And, uh, that is why he is there taking care of his client instead of being on the show with us. Going to see if we can get Gary in trouble. Okay. Why not? I I'm all for that. It sounds like fun actually. 
Okay. So with that, I think we're going to go ahead and shut it down. Thanks so much for being here. Come back next week. It'll be Thursday, 9 Eastern, Modern Spartan Systems and all the guests that they're bringing. We're going to have a great show. And until then...